Oh wow, what a what a loud entry into this into this episode, of Wowzers. All right. Uh, well, hello everyone. My name is Michael SK. Welcome back to Aoi Tori. I don't really recall whatsoever where we left off last time, as it's been a week or so since I last jumped into this lovely adventure. So, no idea why I decided to leave off here out of all places. But here we are talking to the devil on the phone. If I do remember, I think we were talking with Mary about how she had an idea for a play where she actually had a pretty good imagination coming out and wanting to throw the idea of, you know, a play out there. But the problem is, is that her imagination sucks ass because, well, she hasn't really lived an ordinary life whatsoever recently. So I don't really know how this is all going to play out if we want to try and, you know, get this to you know, come to fruition whatsoever, but we'll see. My servant immediately answers. In all of William Shakespeare's writing, what's the phrase you hate the most? Answer me. That figures. Well, that was easy. Why the hell did I decide to just end the recording session there? I feel like we're at the end of the scene anyways. Wanting nothing more, I cut the call and put down my phone. I swear, that's something I've always done in, like, my 10 years of doing this, is that I just I just decide, well, I'm just going to stop recording at this really awkward and, like, inconvenient spot for, you know, whenever Michael decides to record again. I get back into bed and close my eyes, trying to sleep soundly. I need to sleep soundly. Tomorrow it all begins again. To say the world is a stage and the people players is ironic, yet Shakespeare understood better than most. So I believe what he said was correct. I'll act it out. My part in this world under the temporary name given to me, Shiratori Ritsu, the ending is irrelevant. I'll act it out. It'll be a comedy. It'll be a tragedy. It'll be a tale of love. Only those who carry their performance all the way through will find out what's important. I just noticed my microphone is crooked. I'm going to fix that right there. And now I feel better. Also, yeah, the scene was literally like two minutes away from being completed. Why did I just not... Whatever. I mean, how how was I supposed to know, right? Mary, we absolutely have to put on, on a performance of your play. Hi. God damn it, she's so cute. It's first thing the next morning. Mary looks up at me, startled, having only just finished her blood-infused tea. Oh, Morning, Mary. I was really drawn to it. Yeah, it was like two pages, wasn't it? That's about all I can say, having decided to avoid pointing out that she is totally lacking in knowledge about love. Are you embarrassed? Whoops, sorry. I couldn't help myself. I wanted to see her blushing. I'm not going to keep on about it, but I really do want to see it finished. And I'd love to put on a performance at Christmas time in the chapel. Uh, uh, I'm sure everyone will love it. <laughs> Mary grins. Brilliantly. A normal person would refuse out of embarrassment, but Mary just loves making other people happy. Oh, about that. I don't think many people will be able to come. Mary's either on the verge of, or has already exceeded, making 100 friends. It's nothing to do with you, it's just that Christmas Day is the 25th of December. Merry Christmas! Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, right, that. But the problem is that winter breaks here usually start either on the day, or on that day, or the day before. Well, in any case, most of the students go home the moment the end-of-term ceremony ends. 
Yeah, yeah, come on. You can piece it together here. Mary nods in consent. It's good to see. Since the only family she has is what remains of memories from a lifetime ago. Or we could look at it another way. I give her a full face smile. It's a long break for winter, and the only students left here will be ones who are having troubles at home or in some other aspect of their life. Throwing an event, in this case a play, for those students wouldn't or would probably help lighten their moods. <gasps> a beaming smile comes across Mary's face. <laughs> yeah, you'll have an audience, but it won't be like a major one or anything. It's not like you have to come to a decision about it right now. We can start with getting your script finished. Being too pushy will probably backfire, so I take a step back. Oh, who else but the person sitting before us? Yeah, honestly. I stare right at her. But you clearly base the girl after yourself. Why, you're just playing as yourself. There's no acting to do. You just be yourself. I suspected she would refuse. Sorry, I'm getting a drink, but like? I have to I have to say everything. That's my job. I have to I have to speak aloud all dialogue. That's how it goes. That's my uh that's my duty here. Oh no. No, no, no. I discussed the play with my little sister on the way to class, having received permission to do so from Mary. I was hoping to put on a performance in time for Christmas. The script isn't finished, but would you be interested in taking part when the time comes? Mystery demo well, it kind of is, maybe. Mystery? I mean, isn't love a mystery itself? That was stupid. Uh, Mary queries why Sayo sp uh, specified a genre. Don't worry, gamers, I got my drink in there. That was lovely. Those exist? Apparently I'm the only one out of the out of the know. Yokogaishatogekidangateke,現実のホテルとか山荘部隊にしてやるのがあるの。確かにああいうツアーってミステリーばっかりだね。人が殺される日に地上のスリルと犯人探しっていう分かりやすい目的があるし、観客もどうき
それとも犯人のこと言ってるの、uh, We haven't even said we're doing a mystery for sure yet. ああ、そうなの。Everything is really up in the air since the script isn't even done. Sayo's interest quickly fades. Sayo ちゃん、そんなに人を殺す犯人の役とかやりたかったのいいえ、殺される方。Ah, why? Sayo's strange proclatives are no longer, no longer surprising me at this point. What a weird, twisted way to look at that. That's something I've never really thought about whatsoever. So, you're just lazy. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she did fall asleep. I would be worried about our corpse snoring, though. Oh, what is this now, a thriller? Sayo gives a non committal response. In fairness, the whole thing is a bit non committal at the moment. Yeah, it's not done. We don't have anything set in stone. That's all I ask for. What a weird, twisted woman you are. In many ways. We saw a lot of that twisted part in day one with this character. What am I meant to do with these two? These girls sure do love their romance, no matter what form it takes. At least Sayo didn't outright shoot us down. We don't know how many people we will need for this play yet, but it'll definitely be more than what we've got. And so I think this is a good opportunity to ask some people otherwise unconnected to what's going on. Ah, we get to we get to stretch out a bit to the uh to the side characters. The ones without sprites. Or this one. This one's also technically a side character. I'm pretty sure she is. Not wanting people to overhear us. Or maybe she is a main heroine. And she just isn't really a part of the group. I, I, don't, I don't really know where she really fits in, but not wanting people to overhear us, I call Mikako into the corridor to explain what's going on. Do you have an interest in plays? Oh, okay. There's no point in talking your way into a subject with Mikako, and there's no use in hounding her, so I keep it brief. There's also no point in asking her why she doesn't have an interest. The only reply I'd get is her asking why I do have an interest. I could put it to her that, or yeah, I could put it to her that plays are for shared enjoyment, but she would probably just inform me that there are infinite other fun things that are also more worthwhile. Mikako is probably as close to the perfect human as you can get. Almost everyone else is flawed in some way, full of questions. Mikako, in her perfection, recognizes these errors for what they are. Even Mary could be considered defective in comparison. To be endlessly pure and to be perfectly pure seem like two sides of the same coin, but in truth, they couldn't be more different. So I noticed you weren't in yesterday. Were you feeling under the weather? I switched back to daily conversation mode. Oh, so that's what it was? Her house is at the base of the mountain. So she has more freedom to come and go than other students. That's actually, that's actually kind of interesting. Huh. Very interesting. Honestly, this whole area is very, very surprising to me in how it all operates. It's very remote, but it's also not. I don't mean to pry, but was it some kind of family event? That's a relief to hear. I asked to make sure it wasn't a funeral, in case I had to offer my condolences. Oh? I'm not entirely certain what she means. I, I, neither am I. But that's nothing new, so I decide not to worry about it. Oh yeah. Damn, you missed all the fun. Oh, right, I need to introduce you. Damn. I mean, I have a little bit of a gap from last time we went through here with this uh, with this title, so... Yeah, I, I don't really remember what went down, but okay, yeah, I guess she was absent, and that means that she kind of missed out on all the fun that was the surprise of this character. 
I peer into the classroom. Sayo. Nani? Surrounded yet again by classmates, less than the day before, but still quite numerous, Sayo has to lean to see me. Could you come over here when you have a moment? She says in exasperation as she starts heading toward me without a second thought for any of our classmates. I'm worried that our classmates might find my sister rude. I'm surprised they already haven't. Like, holy shit. But they all smile and wave her off as she abandons them. It pays to be a cute anime girl, doesn't it? Weren't you in the middle of something? I ask when Sayo steps out into the corridor. She shrugs. Weird. There's, a, there's probably a whole lot of weird characters here. Obviously, other than the ones we've come across. So that's how it is. No matter which generation of the student body it is, there's always one or two girls out of all of them that get really popular. I think it has something to do with this academy being girls only. At Valentine's, they'll get chocolate, even love letters from some of the girls. They'll be treated as celebrities, whether they want to be or not. Never mind that. I wanted to introduce you to my friend. She was off yesterday. Sayo gestures her chin to Mikako, who's smiling and watching us. I place my head in my hands. Can't you do something about that attitude of yours? That was supposed to be a joke? Apparently, they're given spoken evaluations of each other. They're both smiling, but for some reason, I'm getting a tight pain in my stomach. Uh, well, I'll introduce... Okay. Uh, Sayo cordially presents her hand. Oh yeah, I forgot. She was getting ready to set her up. Sayo chuckles as she retracts her hand. On the surface, it's amicable enough, but the two are still clearly going head to head. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no, we just jump right to it, don't we, Sayo? That's all you ever bring up with people that we walk around with. I somehow managed to forget that this is the first question Sayo asks all of my friends. It is. It is. It happened to, uh... Holy shit, I forgot her name again. God damn it. However... Mikako's expression doesn't even waver. In fact, it's Sayo who twitches an eyebrow. Oh my god. The fact that there's an assumption there, too. So far... Oh my god. The fact that you have to throw it out there. What? Oh my god, dude. Anime, why? You guys. Or Eroge, why? I... Visual novels, why? I know they're only speaking like this because they won't be overheard, but it still fills me with dread. This has gone far beyond a joke. Not that either of them were joking to begin with. No, they're just being straight up with each other, and that's the crazy part here. They're serious. Deadly serious. Fortunately, I'm quickly saved by the bell for morning homeroom. Uh, Sayo smiles at Mikako and then heads into class. Mikako smiles back. Man. Yeah, that's one way to just kind of wrap all that up, isn't it? I sigh, remaining in the corridor a while longer to regain my composure. So, Mikako's out as far as the play's concerned, not that I expected any different. I kind of forgot that that was the main reason we approached her in the first place here. All that's left is Akari. Okay, that's her name. God damn it. One day I'll stop forgetting her name. It's only her, too. I am- well, actually, no, not really, but I imagine she'll be going home for the holidays, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I don't know if she necessarily wants to. I don't think she specifically has family issues, it's just that, like, the reason she's here, you know? Classes proceed with nothing of note happening. 
This is an academy that emphasizes peace and harmony. And the most exciting thing to happen is learning that the history teacher really is going on maternity leave. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And that the substitute will arrive tomorrow. It's then recess. <laughs> Mary springs out in front of me like a rabbit. Yeah, we're meeting in the courtyard. I show her the texts that we've exchanged. I mean, it's actually kind of exciting. It's something new and it sort of benefits Mary. Of course, are you still worried? It's because we care, Mary. Oh, right. That's true. I've been too obvious about it. I need to be more careful. Just then my phone starts ringing. Caller withheld. As either a girl or the devil. Either way, they've got terrible timing. What's with everybody all of a sudden shortening do you to ju? Like, they're just merging the words slightly and it's, it's kind of strange. But Mary suggests as she sees me hesitate over the phone call. Are you sure? Uh, not that I don't trust you, I'm just worried I'm being too overbearing. <laughs> Mary takes over my responsibility, smiling all the while. Just try not to be too pushy with Akari, okay? I think, I think they'll be okay. They're gonna be fine. Me either. Damn, we got a long ringer here. She's timid when under pressure, after all. I could probably get her to do anything I asked, and now I feel guilty for thinking that. Alright, I'll let you take care of it. Can we answer our phone? I follow Mary out into the corridor before answering my phone. Hello? Damn, you're so loud. Huh? This is a surprise. The voice belongs to the devil, no doubt, but I've never felt such displeasure before, which makes me worried it might be someone else. Why are crotch goddamn are you loud? Why on earth would I do that? Like, I'm just gonna start playing with myself here. <laughs> I know I said by episode 5 I'd have all my sound adjustments done, but I'm gonna make one more adjustment. Do we have one? Okay, the devil on the line. You're getting turned down slightly. That's a little bit better. It's still a little loud. I have no idea what she's even talking about anymore. I don't think there was even a point to even try and pay attention. I groan internally, my eyes half closed. You trying to pick a fight? Well, are you? Are you, bitch? God damn. Whoops. I apologize for my vulgarity, father. I really am lucky Mary wasn't still around. Okay, my bad. Well, no, it's your bad, but still. So, I know how much you love your inane chats, but what are you calling for now? Okay, what are you going to do? Don't bring up other girls. I'm on the verge of slapping you for real. Oh, beautiful. That can only end well. So the devil has an interest in plays. We don't have a part for a cell phone. I mean, I guess, but we're not planning anything massive here. The devil's right. There's no way we would be able to pull off anything that requires expert knowledge. You're not exactly wrong. Ugh. Whoa. 
A thunderous noise echoes from every smartphone currently in the corridor and surrounding classrooms, taking me by surprise. That is, naturally, followed by uproar. This is surround sound on a completely different level. Yeah. My heart is still racing a bit. Now I know how advantageous sound effects can be. Just so we're on the same level, since you're joining in for fun, can you promise me you won't get up to any mischief? Okay, I'm not believing any part of that promise. You'll behave yourself if you want to join in. Yeah, we'll see how that all goes. Aren't you meant to revere me or something? Whatever. I'll be counting on you when the time comes. Well, there's a reply that fills me with dread. Oh, lovely. You know, for a side character, this devil on our cell phone isn't all that fun, and goddamn are they too frequent of a side character. We both know you'll be listening to every conversation I have anyway. At this point, I go to cut the call. Oh, wow. How nice. What? No, you moron do oh, It's already here. The devil springs its, sp its surprise on me too fast to put a halt to it. I can't. I'm not going to take your help, so stop offering it. Imagine she's, you know, she'll just continue to send the text. They'll just keep on rolling in. The devil chuckles and then ends the call. Honestly. I've just finished squinting at my phone so I don't see the contents of the text as I delete it when... Oh, I've got another text. This time it's from Mary. I thought it was actually just going to be more of the same. Perfect, we're getting the side characters that don't have sprites involved. I guess they're actually background characters this time, not, not necessarily side characters. They're nobodies. Wait, Akari is going to help out? Maybe she's interested in the teacher, or perhaps she just has time to kill before she, head before she heads home, excuse me. Wow, nice one. Huh. Before sending that text, I add another line. Want to get lunch together? She replies immediately. <laughs> kind of weird, but I'm jealous. I can picture Mary smiling behind the text, which makes me smile too. In any case, while we haven't gotten confirmation from everyone, we should have four or five actors, and that'll be just enough to put on the play. Even so, we don't necessarily know how it's all going to be written out, but if it's based on the story that we've been going through, yeah, we'll be okay. We're all a bunch of novices, so I don't want it to be anything too large scale. Looks like it's going to be a good Christmas this year. On that note, I'm hungry, so it's time for lunch. Hell yeah. No, the idea of a play is actually kind of interesting. It's not the most exciting thing, but I'm sure with the dynamics of all these characters, the setting that we have, we might have something pretty interesting going on here. Maybe just maybe. Classes are now over. Mary and I are on the way home together. Sayo has nothing specific to do at home, so she's loitering around elsewhere. Whatever that means. Didn't you want to hang out with your friends today, Mary? I ask, having seen several girls invite her out as we left the classroom. We've had a week to observe the effects of my blood on her, and at this point, we don't believe we need to worry about it running out during the day. Sorry for rushing you. That's great. Yeah, now that she uh now that she has some characters in mind, or I guess actors in mind, she can kind of write around them. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'll bet. It really does sound fun. I'll be in the chapel, so just call for me if you run into any problems or anything. What is it? Shouldn't you be the one to decide that? 
It's her story after all. So, Nandakito. But I see a geeky no Hanasho Kokono to his sonny. Let's go more. Yarukoto are the show. Oh, we have to be the one that makes the big decisions, huh? She looks at me through upturned eyes. Oh no. Oh no. Or, oh right. Uh, I scratched my head, still feeling at a loss. I can? Mary raises a finger, acting like she's a wise older sister. I bet the girls will love that. If you really want me to play the part, I will, but it might be kind of fun to have Sayo be the guy. Nah, that's not what the ladies are coming to this performance for. Oh, now I get it. I smile in embarrassment as I finally get the point. You want me to pick the girl I'm most interested in to play the main girl. Yeah, that's why I was saying oh no earlier. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it, it really is Mary. Like, for me personally, she is the only character that has, like, been the most interesting to me so far. I would say Akari is kind of up there. Sayo, I don't know yet. I mean, she's she's neat, but she's not the most interesting. I want to say, but decide better of it right now. No, I'm not really close to anyone else. There's Mikako, of course, but I don't think she's really a suitable choice. And this is the most obvious method of hitting on someone ever. Which naturally has me a little hesitant. Okay, fine. I'll think about who should play the lead. Again, I'm not really sure you're supposed to write around the actors, but whatever. Can I at least think about it for a bit? Maybe it depends on the situation. This isn't anything I've ever touched before, so I don't know. That's, uh, soon? She says casually. Not that she's being frivolous, she's just looking out for me. No matter who I pick, it'll be someone I've only met recently. There is no guarantee it'll be someone I end up with either. But if this is fate at work, then I think I'm at a crossroads. But whose fate is it? The Lord's guidance or the devil's tricks? Oh, it's one of those, and you can you can tie that in with all visual novels ever. Especially those with romance. Upon returning home, I changed into my priest's gown, or gown, excuse me, which also happens to be my casual wear. My clerical collar sits firmly around my neck. It's been a while since I had some time all to myself, I murmured to myself. Until recently, this empty, lonely house had been my entire world. On days when no girl came to visit, I would say nothing, save for a prayer, or for at prayer time. My expression hardly changed either. But now I'm conscious of a smile almost always at my lips. It's sure gotten lively around here, crazily so. Right then, I wipe the smile off my face and pull myself together. I may have more to consider and more to do, but now is time, but, but now is the time I spend in service to the Lord. Let's put a the in there, please. It's all a bit pointless, really, with no one coming to the chapel, but it at least gives me a moment to myself. Amen to that one, brother. If I do say so myself, is somebody here? A woman stands alone in the chapel that I would expect to be empty. She's not kneeled like Mary would be, but looking up at the altar. This is surprising. Is this someone we haven't met so far? I really shouldn't be this surprised that there's actually someone here. I should welcome new believers with joy, but part of me dreads the extra effort that would require. Honestly, like... Let's say, um, for your job, you have to actually speak with people that walk in, and you have to, like, give them information that they are asking for, or help them out, or, I don't know. Yeah, that sucks, you know? It's not necessarily extra effort, it's a part of the job, but you don't want to do it. Talking with people sucks. 
Regardless, this woman isn't a student here. By the way, I just described myself a little bit, but she's mature, dressed in a suit. Not a student for sure, but also not a teacher or a member of staff. I know all of them. I'm about to inquire as to who she may be when I have a realization. Excuse me, but you wouldn't happen to be the substitute history teacher, would you? Oh yeah, I forgot about her. Even so, it was literally brought up like 15 minutes ago. I ask her. Oh, whoa. As she turns around and, well, after a moment of surprise, smiles. <laughs> God damn. I, I mean, good day. I was led to believe you weren't starting until tomorrow. She's older than me, well, I'd hope. But I stay in priest mode as I talk to her. Oh, yes, of course. The teachers also live on campus, and naturally, they won't move in the same day they start work. Wait, I'm suddenly hit by a sense of deja vu. Like I've met this woman before. It happened with Sayo, too, but this time must just be a trick of the mind. I'm not going to pay it any notice. So what brings you to the chapel? Are you a believer? The woman speaks softly, but with a composed, mature smile. Uh, nothing like the old story of an alumni coming back to work at where they used to, you know, attend. Oh, uh, is that right? I find myself flustered. You cute little priest. Those words feel like nails scraping down the chalkboard of my manly pride. I mean, to an adult, yeah, it is kind of silly seeing, you know, a high school student dressed like a priest. It, it just is, you know? It, it's not something that you would ever really see. Just her way of describing that is a little... A little weird, I will admit. It's irritating, but also slightly enticing. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm hit again by deja vu. Oh, I see. And this is how I felt when I was afraid of the girls. It's a feeling that faded to the back of my mind as I got older, and no longer felt like the girls that attend the, the academy were above me. I really suck at dealing with older women. Why do we say that out loud? Uh, just talking to myself. <laughs> The woman smiles softly and takes me at my word. Mary or Sayo would have pushed me further for their own amusement, but this woman has maturity in surplus, though technically Mary would be the older one. Uh, yeah, unfortunately there never is. She must have been a student here only a few years ago. Nothing much has changed since then, though several people do come here to pray now. <laughs> She's rather taken aback. I don't allow my expression to change uh, so as to maintain some dignity. So Mary and Akari count as several people now, do they? The number of visitors we receive is not an issue, as long as we can help soothe the souls of those who do come here. The woman shifts her gaze uncomfortably. I've heard this voice actor somewhere before. Was she in a Matsutsumi? I'm trying to remember, but I don't know. I get the feeling something is bothering her. That's only my professional experience talking here, though. I don't suppose I can inquire as to your name? Honestly, I feel like she's from a visual novel. Or maybe even an anime. Like, I don't know. Just something about her voice is just so fucking familiar. And, uh, your surname? She got me. Without a surname to use, I'm stuck with her first name. Well, there's not much need for names in a one-on-one -on -one conversation anyway. <laughs> God damn it. I shrink back as her personality begins to change. Oh, she, she knows our full last name, but we don't get to know hers. Great, cool. That's fair. Yes, as I'm sure all recent graduates are aware, are aware excuse me. <laughs> well, we're, we're trying to speak with respect. Like, we're not trying to, like, be lazy with our way of speech or whatever. Like, 
This is a a formal conversation, not an informal one, I suppose. She's openly laughing at me, trying to be polite. I'm embarrassed. The fuck's that mean? Oh, uh... I, it's not particularly unusual that she would know of me, but the emotion in her voice just now hints at something more. Do I know her? Well, all of a sudden she's closer to us. Risa steps forward, smiling. Her arm extends forward slowly, like time itself is crawling. Her long fingers touch my cheek. Her cold fingers. A woman's fingers. They stroke at my skin, her touch filled with feeling. Okay, this is weird, but my heart pounds as she looks at me through clouded eyes. Not out of sexual excitement, but out of familiarity. I know her. Her touch. Her eyes. This woman. But from where? Risa smiles somewhat sadly. Who is your older sister? Words from my childhood suddenly spill out. The woman leans further forward, forcing me to take a step back. I'm so focused on her encroaching face and the touch of her fingers that I don't notice what's going on below. Her captivating legs are wrapped around my- Why are all the fucking women in this academy so goddamn weird? As we just added all- but like, basically somebody that fits right in. She- she really does. That alone was shocking, but what happens next is even more so. Her leg twists around the back of mine as she presses against my chest. It's graceful, and with no time to resist, I fall right over. This is... odd. And confusing. Huh? I'm not in pain, but my mind can't keep up with what's happening. <laughs> I look up at Risa's face as she straddles me, and beyond that, the chapel ceiling. Okay, but like, what the fuck? Why are we doing this here, in such a holy location? I know her. Oh, whoa, 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 what the fuck was that? Was that something I got a sensor? I, I don't even know, I blinked. <laughs> I fucking blinked during that. I know this. I've seen her face overlaid on the chapel ceiling before from this exact same viewpoint. Then one day a girl showed up with problems too great for my touch to get rid of, so she forced herself on me. It was a pleasant afternoon in winter, like it is now, when I had my first time in the empty chapel. Okay, yeah, wait. Maybe this isn't something I need to censor. Okay. Uh, for a moment I was like, whoa, is it? But no, we're okay. If this is what popped up earlier, I think we're okay. I think we're fine. Oh. It's her. <laughs> what a reaction. My first time, the girl who made me who I am now. I can hear my heartbeat quickening. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be such a fortunate thing that we remember. Welcome back. I'm... What the fuck? I, I respond reflexively. This is bad. My heart's pounding and I can't think straight. This is really bad. I'm no longer myself. She says that I remember her, but in all honesty, I don't remember her at all. I'd completely forgotten her name to the point where I felt nothing when she introduced herself. I don't remember any of the things we must have talked about, not even what was causing her so much grief that she forced herself on me. She's just another girl. Nothing more, nothing less. Everyone was an older sister to me. I love them all. I was special and treated everyone the same. But she was different. She was the first. My powers couldn't erase her problems through touch. And so she created me. I guess you can say she's the source of all evil. Risa whispers. Gaze heat- well, probably not really, but- and then... Mary to the rescue. Mary cries out from somewhere in the main residence. <laughs> yeah, you could hee hee all you want. But this was weird. This was strange. I didn't like any of that. 
A laugh stumbles out of Risa, who stands up. She then offers me a hand to help me up, too. That is highly suspicious. Oh, uh, it's still not looking good. I can't think at all. This woman is bad news for me. Her smile has a tinge of sadness to it. I think that's just how she always smiles. Yeah, I think you have different problems now. Or maybe you retained your different problems from back then that were a little separate from your normal problems. I get it. She's apologizing to... to wait, what the fuck? She's apologizing to and thanking me. This woman was the start. The girl who I first saved. Is it? Did we actually save her? The girl who robbed me of my first time. I can feel my own face cramped up into an expression I don't fully understand. <laughs> Having come to find me when I didn't reply, Mary enters the chapel, only to be brought to a standstill. <laughs> yeah, I think we all forget that this is a public area. <laughs> Risa giggles. She glances over at me and, seeing I'm not moving, turns towards Mary with an air of maturity. I know the voice now. I know the voice now. I think. Grisaya? The principal? Maybe? I don't remember her name. She was terrible. But is that... Is that the voice that I'm hearing here? I knew it sounded so fucking familiar, like I've heard it for years. Yeah, for those here who don't know, I have gone through Grisaya. It was my, in my opinion, my real start with visual novels. I've got a bunch of Let's Plays up on the channel, and I don't really partake in the series whatsoever anymore. I know that there's a little bit of a continuation to it. But hey, if you're a Grisaya fan, um, yeah, there's a Let's Play on here. Or there are Let's Plays from years ago if you want to listen to a little bit of younger Michael for whatever reason. The two of them exchange introductions while smiling. And then Risa cocks her head. Oh yeah, get this. Mary answers without a hint of hesitation. Yeah, kinda. Risa is surprised by the change. It's all coming together. Mary hits the mark with her guess and proceeds to give Risa a simple and very much redacted summary of the past few days. So we could just get that out of the way, you know? Risa is astonished by how much has changed since she was last here. Her voice has to hit the sound of one of those girls, uh, the students who used to live here at the beginning. And here comes our sister, like right on cue. A voice suddenly comes from over by the entrance. My little sister walks over, staring suspiciously at the stranger. Sayo responds, completely disinterested. Yeah, so we've heard. Risa gives Sayo a curious but pleasant smile, having just learned about her from Mary. 
名字を言うのは明日にしておくけどここのおじいだったの。I don't know why she's being so restrictive of her last name. それでリツのことを知ってるんですね。Apparently, even Sayo knows how to behave as she speaks to our new teacher with politeness. She still seems as fed up as always, mind you. Wait, she's not gonna ask a teacher if she's slept with me, is she? That would be a lot of karmic retribution if she did. Yeah, she's kind of just doing her own thing. Don't, don't really mind her. Risa maintains her composure. Sayo says to Mary, presumably not feeling entirely comfortable, and heads into the main residence. Risa watches her leave and then turns back to me and Mary. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, based based on what you told us. I wonder. She bows and takes a peek at my expression, and then straightens up and leaves. She's a mature woman now. There's a lot wrong, Mary. That's all we gotta tell you. Mary asks out of concern. It must be obvious that I'm acting strangely. Uh, I swallow saliva down in my dry throat. My collar feels like it's strangling me, so I loosen it only to find my neck is drenched in sweat. I'm hopeless when it comes to older women. Aren't we all, man? Aren't we all? Mary seems relieved, but she's a smart girl. That's why, she, though she seems at ease, there's a slight edge behind it. She used to go here. I confirm that we had sexual relations. Mary, I really don't want to car your Sayo finding out about this, so I request her to keep it a secret. Without giving a clear reason. Yeah, I would hope things are different now. Though I really don't think things were all that better back then, given the potential circumstances. Yeah. That's not the only reason, though. I look up to the ceiling of the chapel on this bright, peaceful afternoon. It's a sight I've seen many times. Mary asks out of concern, but I'm unable to give her a response. Knowing me, I'll be back to normal in no time. Not right now, though. Mary doesn't ask me anything else. She just stands beside me in silence. Yeah, we're having our inner fight right now. I think. I, I, I don't know. Okay. This seems like a good spot to end up with, uh, or to end off on this episode. But I think the entire cast has been presented to us. I'm pretty sure, at least. I would, I would assume so. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up there. This was a fun one. We are now in the final part of the beginning. So whatever happens after this, I I, I really don't know. I do know that at some point, routes will pop up, and routes, from what I understand, work. Very, very different than Amatsutsumi and Kunado Chronicles, which is a bit of a shame. It's not the latter structure, or maybe it's similar to one. I don't know, but we'll we'll find out. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as we get to know a lot about a character and we're able to help them out in the common route before we jump into their route, that's what I like. But I guess that just you know fucking describes a ladder structure, doesn't it? Well, anyways, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you all in the next one where I hope we get to learn the surname of our teacher, our substitute teacher for history, to be exact. Take it easy, guys.